Hi everyone. This video is kind of a quick little update to a video we released a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago we released the different kata in the Karate Kid movie series and the TV show Cobra Kai. And I thought it was a fun exercise to try to pinpoint the four kata we were able to identify. Now, you know, anyone who's watched this channel before knows I love the Karate Kid and uh, from time to time we do different episodes based on the movie series and the show, especially our series on what kind of karate is in Cobra Kai, which um, I'll put a link in the description below, but basically, for those of you who haven't watched, we determined that our theory is that Miyagi-Do Karate is Goju-Ru Okinawan Karate, and that Cobra Kai is Tang Soo do This is not the place to debate that. Go check out those videos, and we can talk more about that. But the point, though, is what's interesting, though, is as I was working on this update, uh, Jesse Enkamp from The Karate Nerd released his review of the Cobra Kai TV series, and he kind of brought to the surface a really interesting topic. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Jesse Enkamp, go check out his YouTube channel, like, right now. There's a link to that description below as well. But he is a wealth of knowledge, he is an authority, and he is a scholar when it comes to traditional karate, especially Okinawan in Japanese history, so definitely go check his stuff out. But what's fun, though, is... In his video, in his review, he points out a mistake that he found in the Cobra Kai TV show, but the reason I'm doing this little bit of a tag on update is because I don't think it's a mistake so much as I think Jesse uncovered something even bigger, even more interesting, in that both of our theories can coexist. So this mini episode is kind of in two parts. First, I just want to throw my hat into the ring on this new debate, and then we're going to go into the update to our previous episode. The reason that I said it was Goju-Ru was based on the clues that they presented to us in the movie series. First of all, we have our main character, Mr. Miyagi, who is named after Chojin Miyagi, who is the creator and founder of the Goju-Ru karate system. Now, the screenwriter, Robert Mark Kamen, who wrote The Karate Kid, based a lot of the movie on his own experience training in Goju-Ru, and in somewhat, Mr. Miyagi is based a little bit on his own instructor. Another sign that we see is that the techniques and kata that are taught in the movies are present in the Goju-Ru system, although they're not really performed that well. It's kind of the Hollywood choreographed version, but they are present in Goju-Ru. And then finally, in the Karate Kid Part 2, when they go to Okinawa, you see the character of Chozen, who is the student of Sato, which was Miyagi's best friend, who trained with Miyagi, wearing a karate gi with the Goju-Ru or Goju-Kai patch on his uniform. Now, we are led to believe it's the same family style of karate since Miyagi and Sato trained both under Miyagi's father, so they're both, uh, we have to assume, different branches of um, Miyagi-Do karate. Now, with all this said, those are some small clues, but after we released our episode in season two of Cobra Kai, they are now hanging up the photo of Chojin Miyagi in the Miyagi-Do dojo, which makes me wonder if they've seen our episode. But no, to be serious though, there's a lot of clues there to suggest Goju Rukrate. Jesse points out an interesting theory, and I'm not going to spoil it. I want you guys to go watch his channel, but basically he points out why it's not Goju-Ru and yet a different system instead. Now, one of the reasons he says it's not Goju-Ru, which is kind of ironic because that's the update I was doing for this week anyway, is one of the kata that's present in the Cobra Kai TV series. When Daniel is teaching Robbie and Samantha on the water, they are performing part of the Kanku or Kusunku uh, kata, which is not present in Goju-Ru, but it is another other Okinawan styles. And he goes into greater detail to break down details and techniques and performances as to why it's a different style instead of Goju-Ru. But here's where I think our theories can coexist. Goju-Ru was formally founded in 1930 by Chojin Miyagi. In the Cobra Kai TV show, we see on Miyagi's headstone that he was born in 1925, which means that Mr. Miyagi would have been five years old at the establishment of his art. Now, what that means for the Miyagi family style of karate means is that, his, the, historically speaking, the family style cannot be Goju-Ru because it wasn't around yet, which is where Jesse's theory makes complete and perfect sense. However, I believe it's very, very possible, especially in Okinawa, when a lot of styles in the local villages and they share and they, their training influences each other, that when Goju-Ru was established, I think it's very possible that Miyagi's father may have incorporated it, especially since that they make a point in Karate Kid Part 2 to mention that Miyagi's village is next to the village of Naha, which is where Chojin Miyagi lived. And then there's the name Miyagi, so we can even maybe stretch so far as to infer that perhaps it's a fictional relative. But that being said, though, is it's not uncommon for people to adapt style. So perhaps Miyagi's father adapted this new style of karate and blended into the training, which, you know, which would explain the Goju patch and hanging up Chojin Miyagi, but would also explain the katas that are present that aren't normally in Goju-Ru, but they are in the other styles of Okinawan karate. So I do believe that there's room there for both theories to exist. And I think that Jesse's kind of cracked open this to look at it further. It's, it's not just Miyagi-Do karate, but there's different generations of it. And there's a little bit more layers that we can look into with that. Now, another contradiction Jesse brought up was the fact that in Okinawa, most fathers didn't teach their own sons. But in the movie, 
it is very clearly stated by Miyagi that he was taught karate by his father, that he and his best friend Sato were taught by his father. So that is established in the movie lore. However, in the teaser for season three of Cobra Kai, they indicate that Mr. Miyagi has been keeping some sort of family history or family secret from Daniel, and we don't know what that is. So that might perfectly line up with what Jesse's saying. I'm really intrigued to find out. But I do have a question for all of you, and for uh, Jesse Sensei if you're watching as well, is since this kind of spurred on the topic of the photo being hung up, in the Karate Kid part two, we see the Miyagi family dojo, and there are pictures hanging up on the wall. Jojo Miyagi is not shown to be one of them, but there are other faces. So I'm kind of curious if these, since um, I, you know, I'm not as well versed in Okinawan knowledge as Jesse is, or a lot of you out there, I'm just kind of curious, are these real figures? Are these real historical martial artists? Or are these photos and drawings that they made just for the film? That's a question I have for you guys out there. I'm really curious to know. And then there are those out there who say it's just a movie, it doesn't matter, it's fake karate. Of course, it is just a movie, it's fantasy, it's fiction. But when you have fiction that's based on reality, at least to some degree, I find it to be a fun exercise to kind of pick apart references and just see what influences are. So that's the question here is, are the screenwriters doing a really deep dive and trying to be historically accurate? Or are we just seeing a blend of different choreographers putting their own mix into the system? Honestly, it's, it's probably that. So I just wanted to touch on that since I was doing an update anyway on, on our previous episode. So I wanted to throw my hat into the ring on this issue. So once again, if you're not familiar with Jesse, go check out his channel. I have a link in the description below. You're not gonna find anyone on YouTube with a better wealth of knowledge of Okinawan and karate history than him. Top notch authority. However, when it comes to cinema production and the Karate Kid movie trilogy, I'm the ultimate nerd. We recently did an episode on the different katas of the Karate Kid trilogy and the Cobra Kai TV show. And through a fun analysis and exercise, we were able to find four katas that we found present in the movies and the show. Now, some of you out there have some very keen eyes, and we received several comments to point out two of them that we missed. So this episode serves a bit of an update to that episode. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and hit pause, and I've put the link in the description below. Just open a new tab and give it a quick watch through. Um, otherwise, we're gonna talk about uh, the other two kata that you guys have found, and we're gonna now add them to the mix. So just to recap, the four katas that we identified are the main kata of the series that the only one in the movies or show that's actually referred to as kata, and that is Seiyunshin. And that is a traditional Okinawan kata that we see Miyagi teaching Daniel and Daniel teaching his students throughout the process of the show. So the second kata we identified was Koryo, or a version of it. Uh, Thomas Ian Griffith, who plays Terry Silver in Karate Kid Part 3, was performing a version of a very standard form in, or pumse in Taekwondo, but it's not the traditional version or the one that you normally see, but a version taught by Jun Chong, which was his teacher. So that is present in Karate Kid Part 3. Also, we mentioned how the uh, chores that Mr. Miyagi has Daniel do, the wax on, wax off, sand the floor, paint the house, paint the fence, those all stem from Tensho. You know, the hand motions taught in the Okinawan kata of Tensho. And then finally, the most elusive one was the one that we only caught a glimpse of in Karate Kid Part 2. When Daniel and Miyagi go to Okinawa, Daniel wakes up and sees Miyagi finishing a kata in the family dojo. So through a little bit of analysis and investigation, we determined that that was Shishochin, a Gojuru kata. So those are the four kata that we identified in the movies and TV shows. And for the most part, you all agreed, which was, yay, great. But as awesome as you all are, you pointed out two more that we missed. So let's talk about those now. So the first one is Kanku. And... Although Seiyunchen is the primary kata of the Karate Kid series altogether, in Cobra Kai, we do catch glimpses of Kanku when Daniel's teaching his students in Seiyunchen, which is kind of weird because it kind of just pops in there as a glimpse. This is a very old kata, believed to have been brought to Okinawa by a Chinese diplomat. Now, during the course of karate spread, Kanku has found itself a part of several karate systems, including Shurite, Shotokan, Kyokushin, and the Korean arts of Tangsudo and Taekwondo. So we don't really see very much of it in the show, just a few of its signature opening moves in which the hand motions distinctively represent gazing up into the sky. So while it is brief, it is present, so we are going to acknowledge it. Now the second kata is present in the movie, The Next Karate Kid. And I feel like we're going to have to cover this soon in the future Cine Dojo episode because there's a little bit to talk about here because the movie itself kind of fits into a weird place. Now it is a spin-off film, and technically it is part of the universe, but I don't really consider it as part of the original trilogy. Mostly because of several inconsistencies where this movie breaks canon with the main series, but we're gonna get to that into another time. To give it a fair look, viewers have pointed out yet another kata present in that film, and that is the kata of Nianchi Samdan, and sometimes it's pronounced different ways, and it may also be referred to as Teki in some other Japanese systems. 
Now we mainly see it in the part where Julie's in the monastery performing the kata when the monks walk in. And they seem to have felt the creative liberty to throw in the crane kick randomly in the beginning because reasons. And she's performing it to the song Dreams by the Cranberries because who doesn't love performing kata to the cranberries? And I, I, I don't know. Niachi Samdan is also an old Okinawan form that too has found its way into multiple arts, including Tangsudo as well. Now, as far as how both of these kata fit into the universe of the Karate Kid, well, technically speaking, you know, we determined that Miyagi do Karate is Gojuru, but Gojuru was founded when Miyagi was really young, you know, back in the 30s. So it would stand to reason that Karate being Miyagi's family art, that his father and family would have known some other local fighting systems and have other Okinawan influences. So technically speaking, Kusanku and Nianchi Samdan could have been somewhere in that mix. But it's more likely that choreographers Pat Johnson and Hiro Koda put them into the next Karate Kid and the Cobra Kai show, respectively. So all in all, this was just a fun exercise. Yes, it's just a movie and TV shows, but sometimes it's fun to break it down and see what we can dig up. And with all of you guys participating and pointing out new stuff I didn't know, made it that much better. So now we can confirm that there are six kata present in the mainline Karate Kid franchise. Now this does not include the 2010 remake, The Karate Kid, only because that's a completely different consistency. It's in a different universe. It's not canon whatsoever. And that's a whole eye roll all in itself. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else that we missed, any other techniques or katas, please be sure to put them in the comments below and we'll be happy to take a look. Till next time.